Hey guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. What I wanted to show you today was something that was always baffling me uh, when I heard how people were doing this uh, with the live settings with the Axe FX, was uh, changing presets and in this case scenes uh, using MIDI from a DAW. So if you're playing to a click track via Pro Tools, Ableton, um, Cubase, all those other ones, uh, GarageBand, what's the other one, Logic, Logic, right, Logic Pro. Um, you can do all this by sending MIDI information and MIDI program changes to change uh, presets and CC numbers with their corresponding value to change scenes. Now the Axe FX3 has the introduction of channels, so there's a whole other thing that you can do with that. You can change channels as well. I'm not going to be focusing on channels today because I have those programmed into some of my scenes already, so when the scene is switched, it also changes the channel, so I really don't need that right now. But I could do that, and that would be something down the road to complicate things further. Uh, apologies for the light behind me. I'm trying to put this together quickly so I can at least get something out to you guys. So I've got a song here that um, that my band was working on. And what I want to do first is uh, make some changes on the Axe FX itself. So on the Axe FX 3, things are turned off by default to listen for program changes and for also scene switching. Um, so what you need to do is you need to go in, at least for that, and uh, turn on program change so it listens to it. And all that, all that is in the MIDI slash remote menu under setup. So I'll show you how to do that, as well as scenes. Uh, by default on the Axe 8, 34 is the CC number, and then followed by uh, the preset uh, or the scene number. And they actually go 0 through 7. So scenes one through eight, um, and correct me, because I'm going back and forth between both uh, Axe edits. So uh, scene one would be zero, scene two would be uh, change one, con uh, control change one, or CC number. Um, so we're actually dealing with Pro Tools here. You can use any uh, DAW to do this. You just need to kind of go through those menus. So I'm sorry, I don't have a bunch of I've got Logic Pro, but I haven't done it in there yet, so I wanted to specifically do this with Pro Tools. So let's go over to the Axe Effects itself and make those changes. All right, so what you want to do first is you want to come in here to the actual Axe Effects, and you want to get into the MIDI remote menu under Setup. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to press the E encoder, and come in here into uh, MIDI remote, and press Enter here, or Enter there if you want. So Enter here puts me into uh, this MIDI remote menu and you've got these pages over here. We're going to go over to one of these as well to mess with the scene control. By default, I've already scrolled down to it, by default if you, uh, it, it'll bring you in here. So all you got to do is just come down to program change and you want to set that to on. Then you want to come over to the other section and the other page and if you scroll down here, you'll see scene select, and it goes, you know, CC numbers go zero through, zero through 127. Um, and uh, you'll just pick, I just kept it consistent with the uh, Axe 8. If somebody understands a little, little bit better than I do, uh, you know, by all means comment. But I just kept it at 34. It seems to work. And then once you do that, it uh, responds to 34 for the CC number and then the value you, you just set it to what the scene is and which you know scene one is value zero scene two is value one etc all right so um, unfortunately axe edit the the public release I don't know if it's my computer or if it's actual release but it will just all out lose communication so that's why I have the camera pointed over here directly onto the axe effects um, because when I was trying to make these changes, I couldn't see them on Axe Edit, and it would just lose its mind on the USB. So I don't know what's going on with that. So we're just going to go right into the DAW, and I'm going to bring up my little cheat sheet and make sure that I'm doing this correctly. So the first thing you want to do in your DAW is to insert a uh, new track. We're going to go ahead and insert a MIDI track. and put it at the bottom. So I'm actually going to go all the way to the top, stick it in here. And initially it starts on Clips for in Pro Tools uh, 2018, 
we're going to put that to program change because we want to send that data to the axe effects. So under the output inside the I.O. section, you want to go to axe effects 3. And axe effects 3 is listening by default on channel 1. You can go into your MIDI remote settings and you can change that to listen on a different channel if you want to, but uh, not necessary. So we're going to set it to go to channel 1. We've already made the necessary changes under the setup menu, so it should be listening for these changes. At the beginning of the song, this one actually starts on um, two, the measure, I'm sorry, the uh, two count here, right on the downbeat. So I'm gonna insert with the pencil menu, I can actually hold control down on the Mac keyboard and I can put a note in here or a, or a program change. Now it always comes up with this um, error here and you just basically just hit this a couple times and it pops up this MIDI window. So what we need to do from here is you have a controller zero and a controller 32. These are gonna be on controller zero. This is gonna be your, C, your CC notes. So what we wanna do here is we wanna to go to the controller here and we wanna look at this table uh, to see what preset we're on. So right now I'm on preset 59. And uh, let's go over to this chart. So I've got the manual pulled up and we are gonna go up to page. So the MIDI reference tables are on page 174 in this version of the manual. Uh, if I scroll down, I'm on a, a preset 459. So I need to go in here and find preset 459. So we're on here, so we need to be under uh, controller change three and then 75 for the patch. And that corresponds with that. So let's just take this, if we look over here and you see, you'll watch the screen, it's on dual guitars. Let me go ahead and change that just so you'll see that, you, that it will be immediate, but it, you know, it'll change it on the measure, but you can also just change it right here because it's already listening. So number three, so we're gonna put controller zero, we're gonna change that to three. And we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna change it to 74. Now, if you watch this, if I press enter, you watch the screen, it should change it to 458. And it does, that's set for Symphony of Destruction. So, I'll go back, let's change it to 75. That's what I wanna be for this, this um, exercise here. We've changed it back to dual guitars. So I'm gonna hit done there. I'm gonna go back to my session. Now, if we listen, the audio is not gonna be that great because it's just my iPhone picking it up. Um, so I'm going to go on the chorus. So what you can do is you can kind of get the timing down here. A lot of times, you know, if you change it right on the downbeat of something, it may, uh, scenes are pretty, or scenes are immediate, so it's not so bad. But if you're doing a preset change in the middle of a song, you'd obviously want to figure out the best time to, to hit that change if it takes a little bit to load it up. But for scenes, it, it, should be uh, fairly immediate, is that the right word? So I'm gonna go, the chorus starts on 58, okay? So I can go up to here. I can actually change it basically on the end of this. I can change it on 57. So what you want to do here is you want to go up to uh, Window at the top of Pro Tools and hit MIDI Event List. That's going to bring up this window down here. I keep it here to get a little organized. Um, so you can look right here already. We've got that event that we put in there, which was the pro that little symbol is Program Change. And this is the value that I, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, Program Change. And that guy is the preset number, 75, which corresponds to 459. And the event is the controller, the CC number is 3. This confused me for a little bit because I could not figure out, you know, what the next thing to do, uh, you know, how to do all the scene change, and realizing that, oh, I need to go back to this, and I need to figure out, on the Axe 8, it was, what I found looking up was, you know, CC number 34, and then, you know, whatever scene you wanted to change. It was, it was pretty simple. Uh, this one, I manually set it to 34. 
So um, that would be just consistent between that and, and the X8. So if you go over to here, you can see if I scroll down, this is the part that was kind of confusing me. Uh, when selecting scenes using the global options found on the other page, which is where we went, um, of the MIDI remote menu under setup, the value of the designated CC number determines the scene. Well, we, we, we understood that, I guess. So I, I must not be reading this right. But, I mean, if you go to 34 and number 3, this is what confuses me. But my method worked, but like I said, leave me some comments uh, if you understand this better. I'm sure you probably, some of you, a lot of you guys probably do. So I'm going to go back here. So I want to change on uh, 57. Actually, you know what? Let's go to the first chorus, which, which is 25. I'm going to go here to this drop-down menu, and I'm going to insert. I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to hit controller. That will pop up this. I can actually type 25 and press enter. That puts this triangle here, which is this control change or the CC number. And in here, I can put double click. I can hit 34 because that's what's going to change scenes. Uh, and then I can go, I want to put this on my delayed meet setting. And I know that sounds silly, but, you know, I just have weird names for my scenes. Uh, basically, it's just a, a delay, no kind of volume bump. But maybe I want to have a little bit of ambience or a little bit of uh, fullness in the sound. So I'm going to put this. That is scene number two. So that's going to correspond with the uh, CC number 34. And then the value will be one to change to scene two. So add that. Press enter. Now if you watch the screen, it should change at measure 25 to scene two. So if I play that, so actually, if you saw it go back when I when I pressed uh, space, it actually went back to that previous scene. So right now I have just the I forgot already. Um, and then you'll hear it come in in a second. So I went, and you hear that delay in there, so it's already changed it. Um, so I could actually do this if I wanted to, and I could have it... Uh, change the clean. So let's do that. Let's change it to my clean, which is scene four, which be, would be value three. And we're on heavy still. Press play. So change it back to that. If I put it back to here, it will change it back to, once I press play, to that, which is pretty cool. So this is kind of a cool way to get around um, no foot switch. If you're in a studio environment, you want to kind of jam hands-free. It does take uh, some thinking. It does take you getting in there and, and actually tediously coming through here and, uh, and you know adding those events. But if you keep those in mind, keep that MIDI event window open, then you can uh, easily add these in here if you know the measure. So what I would suggest that anybody does, and this is uh, advice that I probably don't take myself, which is silly because everybody does that, but um, is when you have your song in your DAW, you know, take a pen and paper and go through and mark the, you know, listen to it and mark some stuff down and say, okay, uh, I'm going to start out with this preset. Okay, when I get to here, I'm going to go to another preset, if that's what you're doing. And keep in mind that lag in the presets that you need to give it some, you know, either have, you know, the XFX3 can do quite a bit. So you may just, you know, stick with that. I mean, that's just what I do. Stick with a preset 
and then inside there change your scenes and then uh, you know and then of channels if you want of course um, but actually write everything down write all your events that you're going to put in there all your cc's what that what scene that corresponds to what the timing is or the bar that you're going to put it on and then just come back in here to pro tools or any DAW that you're in and open up your MIDI events and put everything in all at once. It's easy, like I said, you can go in here, you can insert um, whatever you want in here, program change, control change. So you don't even have to use the pencil if you want. You can just sit here and learn those shortcuts. So I could sit here in uh, Command L or Command P and, and quickly add this stuff to a song, especially if you have it already written down. Um, so I hope this helps. I hope this gets you at least started. What I'll probably do is, is get into a little more, maybe come in and show you um, something in a song, maybe you can hear the guitar a little bit more and kind of do a playthrough that shows that, that hands-free switching operation. Um, the, the frustrating thing for me is I would go to look for this information and maybe it's because nobody needs the help on it, but I saw just old videos, especially with Pro Tools, and it was pretty frustrating. Um, so I wanted something on the Axe 8 or on the Axe FX3. It was one guy doing an Axe 8 video, but it was with uh, Logic, and I don't use Logic. So uh, Pro Tools guys out there, this may help you and may spur some really cool ideas, things you can do live to get free from your floorboard. And at least, you know, you can always have the foot controller as a backup. But especially if you're running two guitars and a bass player, you know, why not sit there and if you're on click tracks already and you're running with a DAW live, why not just do it this way? Um, maybe because of, you know, uh, nightmares that may happen. I don't know. But I hope you liked it. Let me know. Leave a comment. Ask a question. Get some kind of discussion started if you guys want to talk more about it. And as always, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you get notified when I, when I put some more videos out. And you guys have a good weekend.